So we're going to talk about a very important tool in web ethical hacking probably one of the most important tools because it's not only used for vulnerability scanning where you gather targets information but this process and its tools are also used for hunting bugs and vulnerabilities we'll talk about the concept of web fuzzing and we're also going to introduce the basic of wfuzz it's one of those available tools in kali linux it's free CLI based and easy to use for those who are new to this channel. Welcome. I am your host, name is Dean Armada, and I'm the internet. Action Star. And on this channel, we talk about tech careers and certifications, trivia and tutorials in cybersecurity, trivia and tutorials in cloud and data center, and my journey as an IT instructor. So feel free to check out the rest of the channel and consider subscribing. The first thing you need to do to successfully find web vulnerabilities and bugs is to gather information. But the good news is Fuzzing is a way not only to gather information, but also a way to hunt for bugs and vulnerabilities. So, what is fuzzing? It's the process of sending wide range of invalid input to one application in HTTP request field. Basically, this tool allows us to expose web vulnerabilities by injecting attacks such as cross-site scripting, SQL injection, authentication bypass, and many more. It's also a tool used in finding resources such as servlet scripts, and it also use and do brute force directory attack. Can it replace tools such as Deer Buster and Deer Search? Absolutely. You can also use fuzzing tools to look for IDOR. In short, web fuzzing is one of the easiest way to find various web bugs and vulnerabilities. WFuzz is one of the most common web fuzzing tool in finding and exploiting web application vulnerabilities. It's available in Kali Linux by default, but of course, you can install it in your Windows or Mac devices as well. It's also a complete modular framework written in Python, and it's easier to integrate the output to other tools or custom scripts. Here is our web ethical hacking topology. We have two nodes, the attacker and the target web server. Our goal is to run an SQL injection via web fuzzing. So what is an SQL injection? It's an injection technique where we use database queries via HTML forms. And a successful SQL injection allows the attacker to view data that are not normally be able to retrieve. Or worse, attacker would be able to delete important data using direct database queries. Okay, so first thing that we will do is to get some parameter names used by our target web server, which is the Hackett auction site. And we'll be using Burp Suite. Then we're going to run web fuzzing using WFuzz tool. We'll execute an attack using the collected parameters. The end result is we should be able to successfully find SQL injection vulnerability. I'm here in our Kali Linux, and before we run WFuzz, we want to know which parameters we will be using. How would we know? We will be using Burp Suite, and we will intercept all HTTP actions, including the submission of forms. So let's open a web browser first. So I'm gonna click web browser and uh, we're gonna access uh, the Hackett auction site with an IP address of 192.168.254.70. There you go. And I'm gonna click login there. And uh, before we enter uh, our username and password, before we uh, authenticate, we're going to open first Burp Suite. So under Web Application Analysis, you will see Burp Suite. And uh, okay, so it will run, but I have to click OK. 
and then click next uh, let me close this warning first and uh, I'm gonna click next and we will be using burp suite default configuration so I'm gonna click start burp and uh, there you go we are now or we now have a burp suite running we are more interested in the proxy because the uh, burp suite can do many things but in this task we just want to intercept some of the HTTP actions and we want to see the HTTP request and as you can see intercept is on okay and uh, all right so if we go to PHP auction if I go to help as you can see it's still behaving normally why uh, because although we have a burp suite running we haven't configured our proxy settings so let's configure proxy settings first okay i'm gonna click settings and uh, as you can see um currently it's set to no proxy i will be choosing manual proxy configuration and these values this is for burp suite 127.0.0.1 and port 88 i'm gonna click ok now okay and i'm going to hit x and let's go back to burp suite community so as you can see nothing still nothing why because we haven't really submitted anything or went to any uh, specific page this is what we're gonna do so here in the user login page i will provide the username student1 and the password of student1 now i'm gonna hit submit query okay look at that as you can see in our burp suite it's providing us the http request okay we have the http uh method which is post and this is our user login.php this is the login page and this is our post the ip address of our packet auction site okay and we also have more http request values here uh we're gonna skip it the most important really are these parameters so it's using username parameter for the username student one okay so this is the value and the parameter name for the password is password and uh, we have a student one password value it is not masked which is we know it's really insecure um and we also have uh, another parameter for action equivalent to login so this is a parameter that is very important because this is what really submits the form okay so here's what's happening if i go back to php auction it doesn't go anywhere why because this is intercepted by the burp suite application and before it goes to the next page okay we have to click forward okay so i'm gonna click forward okay as i click forward there you go now it goes to a different page user underscore menu dot php okay and uh if I go back to the PHP auction, it's still uh, not going to another page. It, it still doesn't see the result because I have to click another forward. There you go. We are not seeing anything from the burp suite side. But if I go to the PHP auction, there, okay, it has now redirected. And we see that we are authenticated, redirected to user underscore menu. And we see the user's control panel. Now, if we go back to the Burp Suite community, we're done. But to view what really happened is I can click HTTP history. So we started from here, okay, user underscore login. And you, you will see the summary here. This is what we saw, the HTTP request, including the parameter names and the parameter values, okay? And we were using, um, obviously before we hit the submit button, it was status 200, but after submitting the submit button uh, before we submitted the after we submitted the form or as we submitted the form it sends all of these values and then upon successful login okay it changes to 302 status meaning it redirected from user login page this is the redirect this is the response okay and uh, this is the final page. It redirected from user login to the user menu page. Okay, and as you can see, this is the uh, final response now, HTTP 200 OK. And uh, we got the body where it provides us 
the control panel. Now, um, what I am going to do is I will go back to our Mozilla Firefox and I will disable our proxy settings. Okay, I'm gonna choose no proxy and then hit X and let's see what's gonna happen if I could log out. There you go. So I was able to successfully log out okay, because we're not using the burp suit proxy uh, didn't intercept the HTTP actions. Uh, we don't need burp suit proxy because we were able to gather the information we need. Those are the parameters and the uh, HTTP request method that this application is using. We are now going to do web fuzzing using WFuzz. And what kind of attack we'll be using? It's SQL injection. I'm here in our terminal and we will run WFuzz. Okay, uh, with the command of WFuzz. And uh, the first option that I will be using is dash H. Why? Because we want to know the options and the argument. So dash H is what we're using. This is for help. Dash dash help. This is for advanced help. And uh, we'll use some of the other options such as dash C. So dash C is to add color from the WFuzz output. Okay. And what else? I will also use dash Z or dash Z where we will attach a payload from a file. Okay. And uh, well, we will use uh, this command, file, okay? Then we'll add a path and the uh, word list. So um, the question is, what is the word list and the path that we'll be using? So I will go to another terminal. So this terminal is specific to the path that we will be using. So as you can see, we're in user share word list wfuzz, okay? If I go one, uh, full, one directory up, if I run ls, as you can see, there are many other folders, okay? But what we need is the injection folders because the SQL injection is an, a type of injection attack. So under injection, if I run ls again, you will see other word lists okay, in text format. Um, and what we are going to use is sql.txt because again, it's the SQL injection that we are going to run. So what will happen here is I will just simply copy and paste this path, okay? And I will just type sql.txt manually. So I will go back to my other terminal and I will just paste this directories and I will manually add sql.txt. Now I will also use dash D. This is to specify or add the post data. Uh, also, the form we used in submitting the user credentials is via post method, okay? And, uh, all right, so we're gonna add a payload, okay? So remember the parameters that we um, got from the HTTP request, one of those is username, and this is really important. So this is the parameter uh, that it uses for the username value. Now, all of the data from the file or the word list, which is sql.txt, uh, will be used as payload, okay? And using those data is what we really call fuzz, okay? So this fuzz here will be replaced by all payload from the word list. And uh, I will also add another parameter. We don't need to add the password parameter because the point is we're going to be authenticated successfully without using a password. Okay, that is one of the goal of SQL injection. So the other parameter will be uh, the action, okay? And uh, the value is login, okay? And uh, next this we'll just specify the target, which is 192.168.254.70 and the file name, okay? Which is the user login page, okay? I will specify user underscore login.php and uh, let's run. I'm gonna hit enter. Oh, there you go. So it processes 125 um, SQL values and uh, uh, SQL related payloads. So these are not all legit uh, SQL 
queries but we use all of these payloads and as you can see we may have different uh values for example under lines most of the lines here are 467 so these are the most common probably the most normal page now when you see um more than 467 lines like this 469 um there are a few 469 um this may th the reason why it's different because it may added two or more lines of error or you know two lines for invalid login now you will also you may also see 302 in this output we see four four or five okay we see four um code 302 code and this can be a problem okay probably a successful login authentication so based from this result we got 302 http response code that means it has redirected to a different page and more likely it has successfully authenticated and this uh, auction site is vulnerable to sql injection so let's test so what i'm gonna do is i will just simply copy one of the payloads here and uh, i will use this to authenticate all right uh, let's do this i will use this to authenticate okay um this is the username and i will skip the password i'll just click submit query and as you can see we have successfully logged in and yes 302 um redirect us to user underscore menu dot php now if i click home as you can see we are logged in as uh this is uh, the username that we are using right now or one equals one or another equals and if i click your control panel as you can see we are getting uh not just student one or student two user information but all user information okay and this includes just testing bob smith uh fred jones joan miller and so forth okay so uh, i use the payload as a username manually and we were successfully authenticated okay and uh, i was showing all of the user information because this database query okay if we add this payload to the actual database query um this simply means that it's always true because of this value one is equal to one and will always return all user values Web fuzzing is one of the most important web ethical hacking tool that you must be familiar with for you to become a skillful web security practitioner. So this is just the basics of WFUS. We will also talk about advanced topics like how to automate other tools and scripts based on WFUS output in other video. And we'll also discuss and demonstrate more fuzzing examples using FPUF and Burp Suite Intruder. <laughs>